Welcome back to the Chasing Happiness podcast, an honest podcast about finding happiness, what it really means, and the process of getting there. My name is Crystal, and today I am super excited to have an amazing conversation. Today I'm joined by Martha, and Martha, you're going to explain to everybody what you do, but the thing that I love that I saw on your social media page is you describe yourself as someone who empowers women to break through all of their barriers in life, love, and success, and that just like spoke to my heart. So for people who who are listening who maybe don't know you, do you want to give yourself an introduction so that everybody can know how you can help them? Hi, thank you, Crystal. Hi, everyone. My name is Martha Mock. I'm someone that who was in silence for over 30 years. Someone who was told that I should shut up, put my head down, be the wife, be the sister, be the daughter, that what an Asian culture would expect me to do. The good thing is I'm a rebel, so I like to follow my own heart and do my own thing. Despite what I have been for a 19 years abusive marriage, being bullied at school since the age of six, and the hardest thing for me to admit was being sexually molested by someone I trust. Despite all of that, I still choose to be light. I choose to be a light for someone else. At first, it comes from a place that I want to please other people so I don't get rejected again. And as time go by, I realize that I can find my own confidence and own happiness within me first. So I developed a very successful career as a makeup artist for 17 years before I went into coaching as well. So I coach women to find themselves, to find the confidence from within so they can face the barriers in their life, relationship, and their business. I love this. And I love this for a few reasons, because as a makeup artist, I'm sure having people sit in your chair and just talk to you about the life and the struggle and the ups and downs that we all go through was probably part of your inspiration for deciding to get into the coaching side of things. It is because the woman who is sitting in front of me are the most insecure woman you will ever see. Not one person sitting in my chair would tell me, I love my face, my eyes is big, my nose is straight, and my face is very small. They will all say the opposite comment. We are our hardest critics. Yes. We don't like ourselves for a certain reason. However, if we look into it in from another perspective, for other people to love us and respect us and value us, we must first value, respect, and love ourselves because that it's a lot easier to come by because it's a lot easier to tell us I'm beautiful, I'm strong, I'm important, I matter, and I deserve respect compared to you begging for other people's approval. Right. And it's such a huge thing because as you said, you know, we are our own worst critic in a lot of ways. And, and we recognize, I think, especially as women, we're kinder to our friends than we are to ourselves sometimes. So it's a really big hurdle for people to overcome. So I would imagine because you coach in this space, you probably see a lot of people struggle to get there. It is. We often see women, especially a career woman, that's my special niche, that I can see no matter how shining they are on the outside, which I was one of them, being a successful entrepreneur, going on to stage and talk to thousands of people. But inside I was water, I was empty, and I was scared to let people know who I truly feel. And as a woman, if we don't find that safe harbor, that's someone that they can trust to actually talk to and express to, it will just build up until one day I lost the pot. I went into trauma therapy and trying to rebuild myself again. And the funny thing was, it was my trauma therapist, my hypnotherapist as well, to help me to realize that the potential that I have inside and to encourage me to become a coach today. When she said that I can use my story to see, uh, to inspire other women, I'm like, really? I can do that? who the hell am I? I can barely speak English properly. I have terrible pronunciation. I cannot even like, you know, have no grammar. And who the hell am I to be sharing my story outside? And to my surprises, for someone that who is English as our second language, I'm an author of six different books already. So who the hell am I to tell myself that I can't do it when other people have told me that I should actually trust myself more. So it is not a 
a big shift that one day you just hit a switch and say, I'm confident I can do whatever I want. It's actually about a three millimeter shift that you do every single day that you get yourself better to heal yourself in a way that you feel that you're confident to take the next step. It's always one step after the next. It's not about taking a bungee jump. It's just about taking that little bunny step to get you move along the way. Yes. And I think that's really important because you didn't write six books in one day, right? No. You start small. You decide, okay, I'm going to write something. And maybe you only write a hundred words a day or whatever it happens to be, but eventually you get to the six books, but it takes time. It does. It does. And I think that as a, a career woman myself, I find that I judge myself too much. I judge myself and say, oh, is this good enough? Is it really like what other people want? But then instead of uh, focusing on are we good enough, my suggestion is to focus on why we're doing a certain things that we want. Mm -hmm. Because I find that as human, we tend to get more motivated when there's an outside source that we can fill up ourselves into it. The reason why I write my first books was because of the first COVID wave hit. When the COVID wave hit, I can see my whole industry has been shut down. And there was a lot of people in fear, confusion. We don't know what it is. And I can see the whole world, the energy is just went down. And I've been posting uh, inspirational call. I've been telling people, this is how I go through stuff. Why not I combine them together and make it as my first book? Yes, it looked like a catalog. Yes, I did have a graphic designer helping me out on it. Yes, I even have three friends that try to actually uh, help me with my grandma and make the sentence sounds better. But at the end of the day, there was the one thing that I realized is because I focus on helping other people to get through a tough period. Then it pushed me out of my little comfort zone so I can actually be better. Sometimes as a uh, motivated person, we need to stay in that risk area. It is that opportunity, that gamble that we can move forward. And as long as that we don't see it as a failure, Everything that we didn't go the way we planned is just a learning of what not to do next. Yes. And when we can actually do that, it helps us to move forward a lot further. I love this. And I love this because you touched on giving to other people sort of as a way to motivate yourself, as a way to find that way out of whatever you're going through. Because I think people often, especially in this COVID world that we're living in right now, I think people often are so focused just on surviving their own day that they forget about the world around them. And so much inspiration can be found by helping other people. So much goodness can be felt by you internally by just giving what you can, however you can. So I love this. And it begs the question, like I now want to ask you the question, what inspires you? Um, my partner has been the most amazing support that I got. He is a loving, caring gentleman that I met uh, two years ago after my divorce, after a year and a half of online dating. I've been told that I'm a professional dater, <laughs> <laughs> that I'm finding the white person. And I often hear the word saying that, oh, I'll be so tired if I were you. I'm so sick of those guys and stuff like that and start whinging about it. For me, I see it another way. Every single time that I'm doing something, I'm doing it as an opportunity. If I want to win the lottery, I need to first go and buy the ticket yes. instead of hoping the lottery will drop to me. <laughs> so I did. I continue to put myself out, set up my healthy boundary, set up my standards of what I want in a guy. So that continues and allow me to become even more confident in myself because he is not responsible for my happiness. I need to find the happiness from within so he can be attracted to me. For those of us that who once suffer from abuse, who suffer from a bad relationship, that our partner tends to focus on the things that we are not good at. So we started questioning ourselves, is 
is that really me? Is it really me? Oh, I must be the one because he's telling me. Right. Instead of doing that, because I have the world have told me that I'm not good enough. Who the hell am I? Uh, I call myself the queen of speed because I'm very quick in what I'm doing. And I have question and client rejected me because, oh, you probably, like, you know, other makeup artists uh, will do my wedding for five hours and you only need to do three hours. Really? Are you really good enough for it? Um, we have to understand yes. when we trust ourselves, it takes years to get you onto where you wanted to go. It takes a lot of practice, just like there's a saying in Chinese, it takes 10 years of practice to be able to perform on a stage for two minutes. So there you mm -hmm. go. So when I'm confident enough, just staying in my lane and there you are, sorry. Internet, that's how <laughs> yep. it is. Technical oh, problems, you know, they happen everywhere in this weird yes. world we're living in. Um, exactly. I think the last thing that we heard you say was that when you stay in your lane. Yeah. When you stay in your lane, you will notice that the universe will always bring you to the path that you need. Um, as long as you allow and accept what is actually coming to you. And instead of focusing on what I don't have, ask yourself, what have I got already? So shifting that negativity to positivity and the process of getting what you want. Um, at our stage at the moment, everyone is worried about finances. Everyone is worried about how much money I'm going to have left. Am I going to have my job? Am I going to have this opportunity or not? All of those things is actually going to drag your energy down. And when you feed into that energy, the universe is absorbing that vibration and that's what you're going to get. So instead, every single time that I have that negative or dispowering thought come in, I have an option of saying to myself, I'm in the process of getting abundance, safety and happiness. Just a simple sentence, it can shift our vibration and send out a different message to the universe for us. I'm not a very holistic or spiritual uh, person, but I do believe that we only get what we ask for because we hold the power of holding two keys in our hand. One key is the key of happiness. The other key is key of sadness. If we're constantly holding the key of sadness, no matter what we do, we only open doors to more sadness. It's like someone tell you, oh, wow, uh, you got a different dress on today. Immediately, if you're holding a key of sadness, you will say, oh my God, uh, I'm wearing the wrong thing today. Right. Oh, uh, this dress must look terrible on me. Instead of if you're holding the key of happiness, I'm like, oh, thank you. Which I love it. What do you think? <laughs> I love the color. It brightens my skin up. What do you think about it? You can hear in my voice of my tongue that how everything's starting to change. It is because that when we're vibrating the right way, we will actually get back what we ask for. So instead of keeping ourselves in it, and I understand um, people, it is hard when you're in a, such a mindset that, that you're starting to doubt, you question, you give excuses, or yes, it is a choice. You can stay in that lane if you want to, but you also have a choice of thinking it into another angle. Talking to someone professional really helps you because they don't have their personal judgment. They only guide you to see what you need to see. And that's where I come in into a lot of my friends' I, I call them my friends more than my clients <laughs> because we deal build up this such a beautiful trust that when they need something, they can actually come into me instead of very commercially, oh, they're just a transaction, they're just a number. And right. I think that it's even that you don't have a coach, there will be people in your life that who can give you some mentorship, uh, which I did in my life as well. And I was really, really poor without anything i left my husband um there was nothing left that i have and guess what i have some beautiful people that who was willing to support me and that's what's going to make my life change and it did and all i wanted to say is that doesn't matter where we are at as long as we remain that we are in the process of getting something that we want we won't get beaten down and we won't give up and that's how you break through a situation I love this. I love this because one of the things you touched on is we all sometimes need help and we need help from someone who's not inside our emotional situation. And I think what happens often, especially over the last couple of years, 
because we've been isolated as individuals and our social circles have had to get smaller in some ways, we've lost the ability to look outside for the answers or the help that we need. And having an outside opinion, when someone isn't invested in the outcome, but they are invested in your well-being, is so important for people because the judgment that comes along even if it is well-intentioned, even if the people in your life really do think they're giving you the best advice possible, they sometimes don't even realize there's an ulterior motive in their brain. So having a coach to be able, like yourself, to be able to go to and be able to say, here is where I'm struggling. And I do not understand why, because in all these other areas of my life, I think I'm killing it. But this one particular thing is a problem. Being able to sit down and have that perspective is so important for us all. And I think we live in this society that is consistently telling us, like, we should have all the answers. We should know exactly what to do. We should have it all figured out. And the truth is, like, there is no owner's manual. None of us has it all figured out. No, not even like every single coach actually have their coach as well. So they can actually be guided on the ways that they need to go. And that's just normal because we don't have all the answer. Even Google, YouTube and things (laughs) like that have great uh, opinions about it. Like I was searching for uh, something yesterday and there's probably about 20 million leads that you can actually pick from. But everyone have their own point of view. So you are not here to get confused. Okay. I understand there's overwhelming noises outside, right. but find someone that you can actually relate to. It can be a stranger. It could be someone that you have a a relationship with before, someone that who will just truly listen, because as a human, we all want to be heard. We don't want to bottle up if we don't have to. We bottle up to protect ourselves, to feel like that we don't show any kind of weakness. But showing weakness is not a failure. Showing weakness means that you're human. That's all it is. I love this. Oh, I love this conversation so much. I typically do ask people who come on the podcast a few questions because the community of Chasing Happiness loves to have these questions answered because they're kind of like a catalyst for people to go about their lives and like check in with other people and see if maybe they need their mindset shifted or whatever. So I'm going to ask you the first question, which is if you could go back in time and give yourself a piece of advice, what would it be? Ask. Ask for help. I didn't need to suffer in 19 years in silence. I didn't need to suffer in a relationship that doesn't get me anywhere. I was too scared, too proud, too afraid to show who I am and what I truly need. And that was the biggest lesson that I learned because now I realize all I have to do is ask and express. And how the other person take it is not up to my control. I need to respect their reaction. I need to respect whatever outcome it comes. The most important things for me to realize is no matter what the answer and what the outcome is, I will be okay. I won't die. As long as that I have my hands, my body, my heart, my mindset, I'm going to be okay. And it's so completely okay to actually go into that wish song to see what are the opportunities out there. Yes, I love this. Because I think often we are afraid to ask, especially when it requires asking for help. We are so afraid as human beings to say, hey, I can't do this alone because we think everyone is going to judge us for it. And I really wish, I, I hope and I pray we get to a point in this world where it is just so natural that everyone feels that they can do it openly with anyone, right? Because I think we're all we're all here to support each other in some way, shape, or form, whatever that ends up being. And so if we just ask for the things that we need, maybe we're not going to get them from the first person that we ask, but maybe the second or the third will be the one who gives it. But we have to be willing to keep asking. Oh, I love this. I love this. This is a fantastic answer. Thank you. The next question is, if you could have a conversation with anyone, dead or alive, who would it be and why? It would probably be my older self that I realized that I'm a lot more stronger, a lot more confident, and I am going to be okay no matter what situation I'm in because I have proven to myself that I'm still breathing. Yes, I may not be like, you know, a millionaire yet, but I'm breathing. 
I'm surviving. I have a roof over my head. I have a loving partner. I have a beautiful cat. That's actually good enough. Instead of focusing on what I don't have in life, I, I'm a childless woman by choice. And sometimes I go back into it and think, oh, really, did I miss that opportunity or not? But it was a choice that I'm willing to make. So if I can go back into myself and tell myself that it is okay to make that choice. It is okay to look after you. It is completely okay to make the decision that you make because you have done your best using the resources that you have in the time and space that you have, Mm -hmm. and you are allowed to let it happen. That is such a good point because I think what happens is we often look back at those moments, being a woman of a certain age who doesn't have children myself, we often look back at those moments and we go, did I make the wrong choice, right? Based on where you are and we second guess and we think like, have I missed something? But the truth is you make the decision that's best for you in that particular moment. And you can't do anything other than make that choice based on those circumstances. Who you are today is not who you were yesterday, right? Like for you, it's a brand new morning. Who you are today and how your day unfolds is going to be different than your yesterday morning. Same with mine. And I think often we think with the mindset we have in this moment about how we handled the last moment versus being in a different place in that last moment. So that is such a great piece of advice for you to give people. And it's so important for people to understand because you can't know the things you don't know. And until you Mm. go through an experience, until you change because of that experience, you don't have the knowledge. Like you don't just wake up one morning and know how to fly an airplane, right? Like that's a process. You have to learn the steps to get there if that's what you choose to do. Life is the same way. We learn through the process. So, oh my God, I love that. Love that. And we often have the problem of letting the past trap us. Mm. Instead of realizing that that is a history, that is a past, that is something that's gone. There's no chance in hell that we can actually go back and actually fix it. Technology haven't gone that far. (laughs) So until we have that, then we need to focus on the current state and what will happen in the next 60 seconds. I am not a big believer in having plans that are way too much. I do have plans and goals and visions that I have to go to. First reason is that I don't want to give myself that pressure and Mm. telling myself if I don't hit a certain target, I'm not good enough. Um, I don't want to have that. I just wanted to have the vision of the way that this is where I need to go. This is what I need to do. So what do I need to do next? Instead of looking at my back and say, oh, I've been wasting that time, not doing anything. Mm. Look at me. This is what I'm doing. I must be so bad. I'm feeling bad about myself. There's no point about drooling about the past. The past has already happened. It's a history. Why do we care so much about it? And it is funny that how once we realize what we're truly doing to ourselves, we can choose to be kinder and nicer to ourselves. Yes. And I think it's a choice we have to make every day, right? Especially when we're talking about history and the past. We have to be kinder to ourselves because what we know now is not what we knew then. We have to be kinder to ourselves because we have to take the lesson, but we don't have to take the pain and the suffering that was back in that past. But we can grow from it. We can take the lessons and move forward. So that's brilliant. I love this. Okay. The last question is, what does happiness mean to you? Happiness is when I feel like that I can be me. There were so many times in life that I thought that I was being me, but I was just a puppet for another person. Mm -hmm. True happiness comes from knowing that I can just be whoever I want. I could be loud. I could be sexy. I could be confident. I could be lazy. (laughs) I could be sitting on a couch all day just looking at Netflix. At least I give myself that permission to do and setting what my minimum is. Because I find that we can go down a rabbit hole when we are looking for our happiness because we set our bar too high. Mm. And it's like that, oh, if I didn't make 10 steps today, I'm a failure. I'm not good enough. And I don't deserve anything happy that is about me. No, it's not that. It's about what is the minimum do I need to feel like that I have done something. So for me, even during the time that I was sick, I actually said to myself, what is the minimum do I need for my business? A business still needs to run, 
no matter you're sick or not, until the day you die, a business is there to serve. It's simple as that. So what do I need to do as a minimum for my business is that, oh, I just need to do one social media post a day. That helped me to realize that I'm still present, uh, I'm still giving value, and I'm still hop up holding myself as a business owner. So that's the minimum. So it take me, what, 10 minutes to do a post, and then I'll be lying back on the couch and trying to <laughs> grieve. Exactly the same thing, but I have done my minimum. So I don't feel the pressure of feeling that, oh, my God, I'm such a failure. Oh, my God, I'm procrastinating. Oh, my God, I'm not good enough. And I got mountains of work to do and looking at mm. it like a huge mountain. Instead of trying to eat it, just take one step at a time. I'm suffocating myself. So knowing that I meet my minimum and that gives me happiness because I allow myself to be lazy. I allow myself to be uh, procrastinating for a bit. You know what? As long as I set my return date, that's all I needed to do. That's my minimum. So set your minimum to meet your happiness requirement so you can be who you want to be without uh, feeling guilty, regret, or thinking that you're not good enough. Oh, I love this. I love this because the minimum is going to be different on every single day, right? As you said, on days when you're sick and you really have maybe 3% to give to the world because you're sick, you can set your minimum at that 3%. But on days when you know, you're know you bounding out of bed at 5 a.m., you can have a different kind of minimum. So I love this because we, I think, especially as women speaking from personal experience, we far too often make that bar so high. And then we feel guilty when we can't achieve it every single day. And really we're, we're making ourselves feel guilty because there's nobody knocking on my door saying, Hey, you didn't post on Instagram 16 times today, right? Like it's something we do to ourselves. And if we can get rid of that, then we can remove some of that suffering, even if it is self-inflicted. So I love this. This is amazing. For everyone who is listening, I will post in the show notes all of the ways you can get in touch with Martha. But Martha, for everyone who is listening, what's the best way for them to contact you? Uh, I will share with you my uh, links. That is my uh, link, link tree link that have all my social media platform on it. If you search Super Confident Coach on Google, I'm the first one who come out. And I wanted to offer your audience um, one of my book that I write myself is called The Success Formula for a, a career woman. But it's not just about someone that who's in a career. It is about trying to achieve the goal that you want using a success formula and allowing yourself to know what to do next if you get stuck. So I wanted to share that ebook that I have written to all of your audience. And like I remember that I said, the one of the things that I wish I know was being able to ask for help. I wanted to offer your audience a session that they can come and talk to me. There's no obligation. I'm not selling people anything. I just wanted to be that one person that will give people light and support. So feel free to book in uh, with the book link that you get and you'll be able to come and actually have a chat with me. Me. Remember, no one can help you unless you f- realize that, yes, I need to change. Change it doesn't have to be scary. It's, it's just a three millimeter shift every single day. Oh, I love this. And of course, all of the links will be in the show notes so that you can get in touch with Martha. You can have a chat with Martha. You can check out the book and all of that fun stuff. And Martha, I thank you so much. I know it's super early for you because you're on the other side of the world. So I appreciate you getting up. I appreciate you joining me for this conversation. It has been wonderful and so helpful. I think everyone who's listening will be able to take away so much from this. So thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for listening. I hope you all have a wonderful week. And again, everything will be in the show notes as always so that you can get in touch with Martha and check out everything that she's doing. And I hope you guys all have an amazing week. We will chat with you next week. Bye for now.